Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how to plot cobweb functions using MATLAB and you're going to need two function files for this activity. You're going to need a cobweb.m and also an f.m. Both of these are function files and we'll talk a little bit about what that means. Now before you get started you want to make sure that both of these files are saved in your current working directory. So for example I'm currently in my Math 195 MATLAB folder and if you look over on the left hand side here I see the cobweb.m file. It is a function file and that's denoted with the fx notation right there. And if I scroll down I certainly see my f.m. That's also a function file. Okay, so let's start by looking at what these codes do. The function cobweb takes in five input arguments. So it takes in f, which is a function, it takes in a and b, those are the endpoints of an interval. It takes in x0, which is an initial point, and n is the number of iterates. To call the code, you would copy paste this to get started, and then we can change different parameters and talk about what they mean. This original code was from Michael Pallant, and I have modified it. Let's take a look at what this code does. So the first thing it does is it creates a variable called x, which is an array, and it's uh, linearly spaced points starting at a, ending at b, and there are n of them, n linearly spaced values. So for example, if you said x equals lin space 0 to 1, and you put 5 points in there, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points, and they're equally spaced from 0 to 1. Y evaluates the function f for all of those points. Okay, so f is defined in this function file, and what y equals f of x does is it feeds in all your values x, it feeds them all into function f, and spits back out an array that is named y. So for example, if I say y equals f of x, Notice that an array went in, an array comes out, and that function, whatever the rule is, square root or logistic map, whatever it is, is defined here in, in f.m. We're going to start plotting, so we turn on the hold on command. We'll plot the function, we'll plot y equals x, and we'll put in some x and y labels here. The first value of our array for x will be um, x0, that's our initial value, and then we will plot our initial line, the vertical line, we start at our initial point and we drive up till we hit the function, and then we'll plot the initial horizontal line where we go over to meet the line y equals x. We iterate for i equals 1 to n, and we're done. The function f takes in an input argument x, it could be one number, it could be an array of numbers, and it returns the function evaluated at those x values. So I've got a lot of different functions that are already typed in here, and you can comment those lines or uncomment depending on what you want to run. So the first one we'll take a look at is 2 times x times 1 minus x, and notice the x is an array, and so it's, it's not correct to try and say x times 1 minus x. MATLAB will complain that the matrix dimensions don't agree, so we have to do component-wise multiplication, and that's what that little dot is. In terms of the cobweb plot, what do we notice? We notice that we started with a value, an initial value of 0.2, so we can see we drove up till we hit the function, and then left or right till we hit y equals x, and proceeded that way. It looks like we have a stable equilibrium point right here. We could find that analytically. Uh, what else did our code do? It, it took the interval 0 to 1, so we're going 0 to 1 here on our horizontal and vertical axes, and we did 100 iterates. Okay, so let's add a few things into our code that will make this even better. We'll make the font size larger, and in general that's really good to do if you're making presentations or uh, writing a paper. And let's add a legend. 
So what happened here, we, we do have our legend, so that was a nice touch. And we started at point 9, so we went up till we hit the curve. We drove over till we hit line y equals x, and then we proceeded to climb up towards a stable equilibrium point. Let's try a different function. There are other functions here that you can play with. Um, one that I really recommend looking at and will be important for this week's uh, assignment, we'll be looking at the discrete logistic growth model. So some different values we could look at. We could look at r equals 1.5, see what happens. And in this case, I'm going to look at the cobweb plot. I'm going to go from 0 to 200. I'm going to start with an initial population of 10. And let's take this out for 100 iterates. So notice what happened here. We uh, started at 10, and we go up and over, and we keep doing that little pattern until we get very close here uh, to what looks like a stable equilibrium point around 100. And you might want to make a connection back to our discussion where we looked at the discrete logistic growth model and carrying capacity and different values of R. Let's change our R value and look at R equals 2.2. So let's look what happens here. We again started with an initial population size of 10 and we increased and then it looks like we enter into some sort of stable limit cycle. And you might want to make a connection back to the uh, graphs that we saw in last week's discussion. Okay, lastly, let's take a look at what happens uh, if we choose a different function. So let's uncomment uh, this line right here. This looks like some sort of exponential growth model. So let's take a look there. Okay, so in this model, I'll only go out 10 steps. And let's see what's going on here. Uh, we started at point 1, and as time went by, the values of x kept going and going and you know what happens if we keep going further what if we went to 20 you know do we have a equilibrium point is it stable and it looks like it's not it looks like we're going to experience ungrounded um, unbounded growth and if we kept going we'd probably just see this uh, blue line increasing forever